Thanks for joining everyone. I'm Rob Tietro from RobTietro.com, Portfolio Manager here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and at the Tietro Wealth Advisor Group. Thanks for joining. Really interesting guest I got on today. Last time he was on, he made a few bold predictions and they pretty much all came true. He wrote a piece last week, about a week and a bit ago, and I, I emailed him when I saw the piece. I said, Javid, I want you back on the show. He's coming back. He's back on on the show. Let's bring him in. Let's delay him no longer. He, a man who doesn't need introduction, but I will introduce him anyways. Uh, Javed Mirza, quantitative technical analyst and researcher from Canaccord Genuity Corporation. Welcome, Javed. Perfect, Rob. Thanks so much for having me. Let's start before we get into kind of the technical analysis and some more some more technical <coughs> details. Let's talk maybe with the headlines today. The market started off, I think the big headline is absolutely most definitely the fact that the market started off. When I woke up in the middle of the night, it was minus like a, like a thousand points or something. By the time I got to the office, it was minus 700 or 800 points and markets opened down, I think six, 650 and rallied throughout the day. That'd definitely be the headline, I think, uh, of the day. What are your thoughts on, on a move like that in one day? Oh, it was pretty positive. I mean, obviously we had some commentary out over the weekend that put the markets under pressure, but uh, the rally today was good. It was, it was pretty strong. So, and it looks like, you know, our recent call about the consolidation, it looks like we're trying to hold the line here near important support. So it's uh, all of this is very positive. Yeah, I think, um, you know, CNBC has got the headline as the markets rally, the markets close 100 points up as Fed announcement sparks big comeback. So do you think that the Fed announcement saying that they're going to buy individual corporate bonds, do you think that had a, a, a big part in the comeback? I don't know about a big part. I think it definitely had uh, a part in the rally. But just from our perspective, uh, you know, the markets had a really big correction last week. Uh, we had a negative 7% day in the Dow. So on Thursday, so obviously that was uh, challenging. But uh, markets have gotten ahead of themselves. And that's what we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. And now, uh, you know, they've pulled back a little bit. And it looks like they're uh, hit support. And it looks like they're ready to, to run up uh, for another up leg. Here. Javed, the BNN, uh, one of the articles that I really like is Hertz. Hertz said that it expects, so Hertz, as you and I both know, filed for bankruptcy. And then the stock started trading on, on kind of these discount platforms as Robin Hood and these discount platforms. And they've announced in their filing that they expect stockholders to lose all their money. And they mm -hmm. did a filing, I believe it was a billion dollars. I could check the exact numbers, but they're basically doing a new issue. So they're raising capital given that the stock price has run up so much. What are your thoughts on a bankrupt company raising capital, one, and two, telling people that they're going to lose money if they invest in the IPO or not the IPO, the new issue? Well, I think they're just covering their bases uh, in terms of a uh, risk and disclosure uh, standpoint there. Look, it's, uh, you know, we've had a fair bit of uh, speculative activity over the last, uh, I, I'd call it two to four weeks. And this is on the back of the markets, you know, plummeting from February to March. So, you expect the market to get a little bit ahead of itself. Uh, not many people really saw this V recovery coming. And as a result, you know, at the end, I think people started to get a little bit of FOMO. And I think Hertz is being smart here in terms of they're taking advantage of it. So in Canada, the headlines include that the feds are looking to extend the CERB payments. This is today a president, a prime minister Trudeau announced. Uh, also, the other headline that I think was kind of a neat deal is that Shopify was up about 6% today after they announced a third party deal with Walmart. I'm not exactly sure all the details, but I mean, they've partnered with a giant. And as a result, the market like that, the stock is up. I believe there'll be working. I, I think Shopify's got more third party market than Walmart does. And I think Walmart wants to expand their game. And I think it's a natural fit for Shopify. That stock was up. Wasn't it up 8% or something today? Uh, other Canadian headlines, uh, Cineplex shares tumble as the, the deal fell apart. And there's also a headline here about um, Canadian home sales are the weakest since 1996. But remember, folks, as I've mentioned before on my global TV, if you're watching it, a, a drop in sales does not necessarily mean a drop in prices, as what we've seen in Toronto and Vancouver anyways, was that there was a drop in volume, but not necessarily a drop in price. You could sell half as many houses, but if you sell them at the same price, prices obviously aren't suffering. Um, you wrote a piece, um, sports are starting up again, Javed. That's, that's mm -hmm. huge for me. My Winnipeg Jets are in the playoffs. They're going to be the ninth seed. They're going to be playing in Calgary, uh, against Calgary. That's pretty exciting. And the piece you wrote about a, a week and a bit ago uh, was a North American technical comment. You write these regularly, I want to say, what, every two, three weeks or something like that? Every, every weekend. Every, every weekend. Yeah. 
We I took saw our first piece. weekend off this week. How dare you take a weekend off? <laughs> the risk, you, you wrote a piece titled Reversal Day and Risk Off Assets Points to Short-Term Equity Mark Consolidation. And this was dated June 7th, so Sunday, a week ago. You wrote that you expected yep. a short-term equity market consolidation. Yep. I reached out to you. I said, Javed, let's get you on the show yep. to talk about this. Lo and behold, by the time we're here a week later, uh, we've already had the risk off uh Yep. equity market consolidation. So what did you see last week? That uh, So what we saw was that a couple of risk off assets, so namely bonds, um, the volatility index, the VIX and gold uh, were all showing signs of uh, they gap down, not this Friday, but the Friday previously. And then they rallied, which is basically the same action we saw today where you started uh, at the lows and then you rallied throughout the day. And so that really caught my attention and to me suggested that the rally we saw in equity markets last week um, had run its course. So we wrote this on Sunday or we put it out on Sunday. We work on it on Saturday and Sunday. It came out on June the 7th. And then I think we rallied on Monday um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday started to sell off a bit. And then Thursday, of course, was the big sell off day. Tried to rally a bit in the Friday, but I think people were scared about holding over uh, the weekend. And then of course, today we had the, 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 the the rally into the close. So I think from what we're seeing here today, uh, it looks like the uh, short term pullback here uh, is likely to be over and we're going to try the next up leg. And that's what we've talked about over the last couple of weeks is that we saw this short term corrective phase, uh, which I think we've seen. And then we have one more up leg, which will take us some point uh, in the end of June, early July. But uh, that being said, there's still one bigger corrective phase coming. I think the summer is going to be choppy and uh, it looks like will likely have some sort of bigger correction, uh, probably something around the lines of 10 to 15% uh, at some point uh, over uh, the next, uh, probably in July or August, it looks like. You talk about your uh, some of the reasons that you think the equity market consolidation is coming is that you talked about the put call ratios were at bullish extremes, consistent yep. with prior intermediate peaks. So you also talked about the smart money having reduced their exposure to copper and WTI crude. Yep. These, are, these are things you tracked. And you talked about defensive sectors showing early signs of relative outperformance, which is, which is something Something you, you follow when you take a look at technical signs on a market. Yeah, exactly. So uh, all of these things to us uh, suggested that things were a bit frothy and the market had gotten it ahead of itself and that portfolio managers at the margin were already starting to position defensively. So all of these, you know, when all, when you have one or two signals, um, you know, then you, you look at it, but it doesn't really alarm you. But when you have five or six things saying the same thing, it's, uh, you know, it, it, you really have to step up and take notice. So uh, the key point or the takeaway is that most of these conditions still remain. So the smart money is still pretty short, uh, crude and copper here. So although we expect at least one more short term rally attempt here, uh, we think that once that is done, um, you know, through July, August, uh, the market's going to have uh, a little bit of a choppier time and choppier window. You say July, August, is that a technical sign or is that con is that supposed to coincide with anything that's happening in the market? Like I know that's earnings season around that time. Yeah, and it's also seasonality. Typically, that's where a lot of portfolio man managers take time off. And the indicators that we have suggest We've had a really good run, run over the last couple of months. I, I think a lot of people will likely look to take some money off the table. So I think that the setup is there for a, a bigger corrective phase.